All right, everyone, thank you for your patience getting started tonight. I'm really impressed how many of you have joined in. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, um, so you're joined on the Managers Committee. There's myself, David Ottavio, and I'll let folks do voices so that you can hear each other's voices. Hi, it's Anna Lorgan. And Noelle Savarese, who you've also seen on emails from us. Sorry, she just had to step away for a second. So, welcome. Um, everyone, if you could, and I'll try to do this in no you know, just understand who's on the call and which teams you're here for. Uh, Revolution Joe Capone. Capone. Joe Capone, G10 Phoenix. Lisa Newgarten, G10 Ravens. Oh, this is Melissa DeSori, um, G8 Spurs. Okie doke, yeah. everyone. Um, there's one person I can hear the kids in the background. So if folks don't mind um, muting um, your call until you have something to chime in, and you're definitely welcome to chime in as we're going through um, the presentation tonight. So without further ado, we will get started. So I'm on my computer, tap along. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, and thank you, first and foremost, for volunteering to be managers on each of your respective kids' teams. I really hope that this um, becomes a rewarding experience for each and one of you. So tonight, what we're going to go through on our agenda um, are some of the objectives, um, explain a little more on team organization, getting started, although most of you have already gotten started. Um, just refer you to some key online resources, um, a little tidbits on communication, medical forms, game cards, game scheduling, and also help you identify tasks that can be delegated, um, which will help you help the team. Um, and um, go over expenses and any other questions that you have, and hopefully we'll be able to answer them tonight. So um, once again, the objective tonight is to introduce you to a variety of team manager tools that'll help you throughout the season, clarify what your responsibilities for on the team and help you help your team. All right, so this org chart is really simple and I think it's because the task is really simple here. Um, the way things are worked out in each team, we have the coach whose primary responsibility is soccer. We have the manager whose primary responsibility is logistics um, and you'll have a partnership with that coach. Um, then from there, the manager will be communicating mostly to the parents. And I think most of you are with younger teams and that's really where things are. I will note as you get to high school teams, that communication will spread and it'll start getting to the players as well. But fundamentally, all of us are working towards helping out the players, also known as the kids. Um, and hopefully that's really straightforward. I, if there's any questions, let me know, but I, I assume there's no questions on that. Great. Okay, so the basic tools that you have online um, as you'll be managing things is Sports Illustrated Play, which we'll refer to as SIP, and using the WYSL um, website for things. So to be clear, on the Sports Illustrated Play site, you can use that for communication, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But most importantly, that's where you're going to get your roster from. That's where I think a lot of you have already gone in and gotten information on how to contact people. But that is where you're going to get your lineup card, which we'll explain a little bit later on in the presentation. And that's a really important document to get. Um, on the WYSL website is where you will see what your game schedule is. And it'll also give you the contact information for who you'll be playing each week. Um, and that's also really helpful because one of the things that you'll be doing over the course of the season is reaching out to your respective opponent for the weekend before and confirming things like you know, really basic stuff like what color jersey each team is going to be wearing so both don't show up wearing black or both don't show up wearing white. Um, and just making sure that they're clear on when the game is. Um, it's just really helpful to get these things sorted out. Um, if you're traveling to play another team, they can also use that as the opportunity to let you know if there's any, any idiosyncrasies about where their field is so that it makes it easier for everyone on your team to get to the field. Okay? 
Any questions on those two things? Has everyone been on each of those? Or does anyone have any questions about those two websites, if you will? Not really, no. Yeah, and just to be clear, links to each of those are on our homepage. So by example, for, if anyone has had, you know, wants to understand how to get to Sports Illustrated Play, that is the same way that you go in to register. Um, it's just you go in as yourself, I mean, as the manager, you get access to other things. Great. Okay. So um, some key online resources that are available is we've got a page on our website called Important Links. Um, and that's where we try to keep, as of all things you might be surprised, where we keep important, helpful links for you. Um, if any of you have not been to that page so far, um, hopefully it's helpful. Um, I'm also the person who handles the website. So if you find things unclear on that page or find something that you think should be added or fixed, um, please let me know. I'd appreciate it. Um, in addition, we also have a manager's resources page. I'm sure you've all been to that page so far, um, where we also have the links to the manager's guide, but it also gives you the key contact information. As you can see down here, for a lot of the folks that you may need to reach out to during the course of the season, um, as well as a link to getting in touch with the three of us. Any questions? This is the biggest group we've had for a webinar and the best group we've had for a webinar so far. So you guys are awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, email slash communication. This is really, to me, the fundamental of what a manager needs to do for the team. And there's a number of different tools available to you. You can use the team wall, which is what you access through Sports Illustrated Play. The advantage of using the team wall is it has everyone's email address that they used when they registered for Manhattan Soccer Club. Um, the downside of it is you have to work on their website to both compose and send email. But to me, that's a downside because, at least for me, I compose my notes over time and recycle them a bit you know, on the weekly notes. So um, another way of doing things is using email or using a tool called Google Groups. And I'd say that the, using Google Groups is a bit of an old school way of doing things. And basically it's using a Google tool that allows you to create a distribution list so that you can come up with one email address to send things to. And that was the tool I've used for a good long time. Um, the upside of that is you can control how things are distributed on there. And if other parents or family members need to be copied who were not on the original registration, you can add email addresses to that so that you can send email to that group by just simply using one email address. And Google has a whole bunch of helpful hints on how to do that. But if you have questions on that, I'm regrettably more skilled in that one than, than other things are out there. But we'll also share with you, there's a, another tool called Team Snap that you may have heard of from other managers. Um, my fantastic manager who's sitting next to me here, Anna uses it for um, my son's team and our, our son's team. And find that to be really helpful because it, allows you to use a variety of ways to communicate with folks, both email, instant message, and it also um, is very helpful for schedule, helpful, excuse me, with scheduling because you can plug in the team schedule on Team Snap and also poll who's going to show up for a game, who's going to show up for a practice, and allow you in that one place to keep track, and not, excuse me, not keep track, but identify the location of the game. Um, you know, we, the world we live in now is you basically, to give instructions for people to get to a game, you just have to give them the address, and they'll plug it into whatever GPS phone thingy that they use to get there. Any questions? A quick question about Team Snap. Do you recommend the free version or the paid version? I pay for my version, um, but I use it from multiple. I use it from multiple teams and um, multiple sports for my kids. So uh, I think you could probably use the free version without any trouble. But I kind of just suck up my twelve dollars and know how much time it has saved me, and go from there. I, I find it very helpful because really all of the work is done 
you sort of ahead of time. Once you input a, an address for a field, you never have to put it in again. You, you know, it's just kind of, it's all so smart. And the fact that you can take it with you and have it in your pocket with your phone, you can my entire team parents and these are 16 year old boys. So, you know, I text them directly. Um, it, to me, it's just, it, it's gotten right what all the other things have gotten wrong. That's my, and I don't work for them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, well, we can circle back on questions on communication as we keep going. But basically, the really important thing here is to have whatever kind of tool is most helpful for you to get information out. Because the bottom line is it's about making sure that you can communicate to your team. So, what is it that you're communicating? And in fact, we put this as email protocol. So, you know, what's the goals of this? You want to make sure that you copy everyone. And that includes the coach, because once again, you want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, you try to keep it simple. Um, try to, you know, what I was doing um, previously was before I had the good fortune to have someone using TeamSnap to send all these things out, um, was trying to keep my messages to the team to two a week. Uh, weekly summary on a Monday that just reiterated what the schedule was going to be for the week, and then a weekend update. Um, what was different about the weekend update? Two things. One, I would tell people what color jersey to wear to the game, which I wouldn't know until later in the week, because during the week I communicated with the opposing um, coach or manager. Um, and two, you will find that most people have a hard time keeping track of things unless it's at the top of their inbox. So um, it'll save you responding to countless emails on a Friday afternoon when someone will email you directly saying, could you just remind me when the game is this weekend? Um, it, it, you will be surprised at how clear you can be communicating what's coming up and how many questions people will have for you. Um, and that just seems to be the nature of things. Um, and it just get, becomes even more so when you're um, helping your kids out. So I take it all of you have sort of gotten an idea of like how to do these concise emails. I think everyone's received an email or been copied on one from Ray explaining what the overall season is and things. And that, you know, I think is a good example of how, you know, to map things out that you send out. Make sense? Uh, I'm sure there's questions here. Oh, come on, there's got to be one. All right, awesome. Okay, medical forms. Um, I think by now you've probably gotten tired of our request for collecting medical forms, but just to be clear, um, what the purpose of the medical forms is, actually the purpose of the medical forms is, I should say the process, is that you as the team manager collect all of the medical forms for the team. That's both the Manhattan <coughs> Club form and the U.S. Club form. And then from there, I recommend you make, or not recommend, I ask that you make two copies. One copy you're going to hand to your coach, and they're going to keep that in their coach's bag and have that so that if anything happens during a practice, they have the emergency contact info um, to reach out to you so that it's on a piece of paper and it's ready and they don't have to worry that their phone's charged or not and things like that. Um, and also to have something to make sure that if they get to a hospital and there's any questions that things are okay to take care of this kid, that you have something that will you know, accompany them going there. The other hard copy will become part of your game day packet and something that you or who's ever bringing the game day packet to the game will bring to each and every game. I then also recommend that you scan each of the copies of this because it has become more normal for tournament check-in to be able to do that electronically. In the old days, in the dark ages, you used to have to show up an hour or two before the first game and go to a registrar's table and show them each of the medical forms and the player cards. What's become much more common now is that they'll allow you to do that in advance by submitting to them one packet that has all of your medical forms 
and copies of all of the player cards so that they can check those in advance. Um, they'll also request a copy of your roster. So hopefully that's clear so far. So the other thing, and I have it at the top of the list here, is to complete a short acknowledgement form. And really what we're looking for is a confirmation from each manager that you've received every medical form. Now, to be clear, a player is not allowed to participate in a practice or a game unless they have submitted that medical form to you. Okay, quick question on that. Um, one of my players, uh, the parent is saying that they've sent the form uh, to Sam Arnoff. And um, in fairness, uh, the, the parent is, is, is speaks only Spanish, and my Spanish is sort of you know mediocre. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, I, I'm trying, but it, you know, it's, it's not the best. Um, but if, but if the club has it, um, can I just like, you know, ask Sam to just sort of get me a copy instead of, you know, sort of if struggling it, with the flavor? Absolutely. Sam is a, at least to my, um, witness, answers emails incredibly quickly. So if you send him a note and just let him know which team and what the player's name is, um, my guess is he will respond to you quite quickly. And if he doesn't, let us know. But he's, he's a yeah. champion. All right. So I'll just do that. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I mean, you know, once again, we're not trying to turn all of the managers into the medical form police, and it shouldn't become a, you know, a, a tedious task to get these things. But at the same time, this is something, you know, that parents need to be able to take care of to help their kids out. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the kids. And I'll say, from my experience, having the medical forms, I've got an iPhone, I've got tons, everyone's contact, I load everything in, but there's nothing more reassuring than looking at a piece of paper when you're 10 minutes before the start of the game or a half hour before and you don't know where a player is to be able to use, take a look at the emergency contact info and be able to reach out to find out that they're in the parking lot on their way or you know, or something else, but hopefully something positive. Uh, just a quick second. I was told from another coach that we don't need the health um, health cards or the um, medical cards, just the forms. Put on the form and ask for it. So, which is it? Do we need the cards or we don't? The insurance card. Yeah. Yeah, but that. Uh, once again, I'll say back in the old days, because um, you can't tell on this call, but I'm really, really old, and I have a son who's been in the club a long time. He's, he's a 16-year-old now, and now he's a U17, and he started in the beginning. We used to have to do a number of different things with the medical forms. They used to have to. And in fact, I don't even want to say those things because I don't want to confuse you. But just to be clear, you don't need to have a copy of the insurance card. You just need these forms completed. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move along. And once again, if you have questions, that's what we have room for for later on. Okay, uniforms, this has to be the easiest thing for you because so much has been moved to upper 90 to make sure that folks have ordered their uniforms. Hopefully everyone has them together by now. Um, meaning each of your players has both a black jersey, a white jersey, black shorts, red socks that they're ready to go. Um, spares, um, that's something we recommend that you have at least one you know, set, a black and a white jersey for when somebody doesn't bring the right jersey to a game. Now, for those of you who are on the much younger teams, um, that's something you'll most definitely have to order. For some of you that have older teams that where you're taking over, um, it's definitely worth reaching out to the previous manager to see if they already have a set of these. Um, once again, it just needs to be an MSC black and white jersey that has a number on it that is not the number of anybody playing on the field. Um, and that's, that's really what that needs to be. It's, you know, and once again, if you're going to order one, then check with Eddie Sutton, who will confirm with Upper 90 that, actually, he'll be the one who will be able to confirm that when you have a spare jersey made, that it's using a number that is not already assigned to a player. Because that's really what it's just there for, is just to avoid confusion for the refs about who's who on the field. And just to be clear, if you order 
spare set of jerseys from upper 90, that is something that you can quite clearly submit for reimbursement. And I will share, I did hear from one coach that upper 90 said they were backed up. I know when I've been in a jam with them before, they've been able to reach into the, they have, you know, they have extra jerseys there in different ways that were made for someone and was the wrong size and what, what have you. And they've been incredibly helpful to make sure that you're able to get a spare set. Hi, I just going to interject with Newgarten. I ordered for my daughter um, the uniforms, you know, before the deadline, and I'm getting emails that saying that they're not ready. And a couple of the parents have also, because most of these kids are new this year at this age, haven't received them as well. Now, I'm not in a predicament because I, do, I have two older daughters with the club, so I can pick one of their shirts. But what do I tell the parents? Do I send them to Upper 90 to say, hey, can you pick up a spare? What do I do with that? Um, good night. Excuse me. <laughs> no, good question. Um, I would, <laughs> I would call upper 90 and if they don't give you a satisfactory, I would recommend they call upper 90 because I know that they issue a lot of very automatic emails. I got one saying the order was going to be delayed and then I, I ordered it on time too. And quite frankly, I'm in no rush and they know I'm in no rush because my son's on a high school team. And I got the notification right. on Saturday that the jersey was ready. Now that, you know, may mean that it was easier for them to fill. A, you know, I don't even know what size he is anymore. I think he's a size medium or large adult, which, you know, will be different than what they're looking for for the younger teams. But I would first call Upper 90 and then let it, Eddie Sutton know you're having a problem. Okay. And then my other question is, how do I submit for reimbursement? We'll get to that in a little bit, but there's a system called Sorry. Tally. No, it's, this is all good. It's a great question. We have a system called Tally, which I'll explain a little more later, but fundamentally you'll reach out to Sam Arnoff and he'll get you set up on it. Great. Okay. And, it, and it's a really easy system. I'll say from, okay. not to jump ahead too much, but when, of all the things we surveyed managers on last year, the one thing that we quite clearly got, um, positive feedback on was the tally system that made it really easy. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so the next thing is game cards. Um, and I'm sure that's the thing that's on the top of everyone's mind right now. Um, and for those who are new at this, um, the picture on the side there is what these game cards look like. In fact, this is what my son's team, you, I'm sorry, player cards for each of players on there, then this is what the Westchester Youth Soccer League cards look like. They'll also say U.S. Club Soccer on it. Um, those are being handled for you by Paul Nicholas, and he will have those at Upper 90 this weekend by at the latest 11 a.m. so that you can go to Upper 90 um, to pick these up. Um, I don't know for sure. I reached out to him earlier today to confirm that how these were being distributed. I'm assuming that an email is going to go out um, by the latest tomorrow morning confirming that as well. Um, just to be clear, what these cards are is identification for each player. For the, once again, for those of you who are new with this, and what they'll, when you get them, they'll be on a ring, and you'll bring them to each game, and then you'll hand them to the referee at the beginning of the game, and they will use these to check in players. Um, and then the referee will hold on to the game cards, um, the player cards, excuse me, um, for the duration of the match, and at the end of the match, return them to you. That's how it's supposed to work. We have a variety of different types of refs in the WYSL who are all great and well-meaning, and at times um, have a tight schedule. So it is very important for you to um, remember to remind the referee to return the cards to you. It's really easy after a good game or, or even a bad game to, you know, just turn away and focus on the kids, but it's really important that you remember, um, have the presence of mind to reach out to the ref to make sure you get them back. I've certainly been in the situation where everyone finishes up and then you look at the coach and say, did he give them to you? And then the coach looks at you and goes, what? And 
you wind up reaching out to one of us and saying, what do I do in this situation? And there's a way to handle it. You reach out to the ref coordinator, you get contact into the ref and find out that yes, he took them someplace. Um, but save yourself the, um, the um, hassle and just make sure to grab them at the end of the game. I'm just saying that the kits will, your shirts will be ready by the weekend and there will be an announcement going out to tell you that, but uh, the hoodies and warm ups will not be ready for uh, in the foreseeable future. I don't know when they'll be ready, but they're they're working on getting you the jerseys first. Great, thanks. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna head on to the next thing, which is game scheduling. Now, the great thing about the WYSL is they create the full schedule. Um, and in fact, you've all seen the sort of draft version. In fact, um, since I'm not in WYSL, can anyone let me know if they've issued a final schedule yet, or are you still in the draft schedule form? The final. You have the final schedule? Great. Um, so now you can tell everyone on your team what the schedule is. I know I had emailed with um, one parent manager who was asking about the preliminary schedule and whether they could share that with the team. And my caution on that was that it likely will change in some way. And it's just really helpful to caution parents with that. But now that it's finalized, um, that's great. I would recommend on a weekly basis, you check it just to see that nothing has changed. Um, it's not supposed to, but things are possible to change on the schedule. If you know, some reason they may not need to move a field or something, or a team will come up with a conflict and it'll be reflected on there. So I recommend you take a look every week at the your schedule to confirm everything. Now, when you click on the team that you're playing, you'll also get that team's contact info. Similar to what you're seeing on the site here, it'll have your coach's name and your name will be on the website. Um, and it'll also give you a place, if you see over here, where it says email, you'll get the email address of the opposing coach and manager. And I find it's very helpful to just send an email to both of them. I usually address the coach and manager as coaches and just send an email, I'd say Tuesday of that week, just confirming the details of the upcoming game. Um, when it's a home game, let them know the little idiosyncrasies about playing on Randall's Island, you'll be made aware of those because you'll be getting reminders each week from the club about our home games, but letting them know little things like not to bring their dogs to the field, which up in Westchester is not an uncommon thing, but you can't do that on Randall's, and to let them know that they need to back into parking spots depending on where the area is on Randall's because if you're not experienced parking on Randall's yet, um, they most certainly will at you if you are not parked in a parking space the way that they want you to. Um, but once again, I th mentioned this earlier, um, what the other things you want to confirm with your opposing coach is which uniform you're going to be wearing. And it just makes it easier for you and the kids to have the right one on when it's time for the game to start. No questions? Uh, on, on, on the uni, is there a standard, like away is one color and home is the other color? You know, I'm, I'm looking at Anne Noel saying, what's the right answer on that one? Okay. Okay. But I think, I think for MSC, for what our standard is, isn't white the home jersey, typically? Yeah. I believe that it is. White was yeah. always home and black was away. <laughs> That's why I had to scratch my head on that one because you'll show up on Randall's on the weekend and you'll see a bunch of whites and then a black. Um, but anyhow, 
Yeah, and yeah. And, and I will say, yeah, but but typically, like when you're at a tournament, it'll dictate which team has to change. You know, so it'll be whoever the home team is has to. I don't remember what the tournament rules are for that, but but anyhow, what I found from experience is that the sooner you reach out to the opposing team to say what color you intend to wear, um, that's your way of confirming that. So to me, it was always better to send the email before the opposing team reaches out to you to say that we'd like to wear white this weekend because I never want to feel mean telling them no, they can't. Um, but I'd rather tell them right up front, you know, my intention is to have my team wear white. Um, you'll sometimes find that, you know, there'll be a team that says, uh, we only have one jersey. And, you know, then, then you just work around it and accommodate. Any other questions on that? Um, I'm just going to expand a little more on game scheduling. It's just for the most part, everything's straightforward. Things will happen if a game gets postponed for some reason, and then the rescheduled game will show up on your uh, updated schedule. So once again, that's another reason for looking at you. Sorry, guys, I want to just say also, if you haven't, if this is totally new, you should definitely read the rule, the WYSL rules in terms of games. Like you sometimes, um, the basic rule of thumb as a WYSL team is you can never not show up to a game unless you receive confirmation from the director of the league. So reading cats and dogs, there can be like two feet of snow on the ground, but unless you see an email that somehow it says that the, the head of WISL says, you know, this game is off, you have to show up. It's kind of, you know, don't, don't assume, you cannot assume anything. Um, and the club can be fined if, you know, for some reason we don't show up to a game that was supposed to happen. Um, and it's also good to review because it says sort of what the rules are if a referee doesn't show up, um, et cetera. So I would definitely spend a little bit of time on, on their website uh, just to, to learn sort of their governing rules in terms of games and protocol, et cetera. Okay, we'll keep moving along. Once again, if there's questions, we can get to those later. Okay, tasks that can be delegated. Um, this to me is a helpful one because once again, you're doing a lot as the team manager and it's always helpful to get, or it's always great to get help from other parents on the team. Um, score reporting, I'm actually happy there's been some updates on this. So that's been typically a task that I've asked another parent to do. Um, because on the MSE website, we ask for folks to report the score and also a, a blurb of the game. Um, we just found out that WYSL has changed how they're doing score reporting this year and that they're having the referees report the score, which is really great because that was always a task that just for me, it wasn't all that much to do, but it just was a lot nicer to have somebody else take care of after the game was over. Um, so we're still sorting through how we want to handle it at MSC this year, because there's a little changes on that. But that's one thing that I think still would be helpful if there's someone on the team who has skills as a writer and likes to write. Um, I know I always liked including that in my weekly summary when another parent was able to write a great little blurb that said something about the game. And I will say when the kids were younger, it was always nice to get an inclusion of what every kid did on the team because um, I thought it was nice. Um, the medical bag is something that would also be helpful to have another parent help out with on the team. That's one of the things I do to help out on my team. I'm the person who um, brings it to every game. A medical bag is basically a first aid kit. It's largely composed of um, ice packs, and a variety of band-aids and you know simple stuff like that yeah and all the supplies for that and believe me you will go through ice packs because all of our players are fantastic and they're strong and they all have the most incredible things that can be solved with an ice pack during the course of a game um many teams carry a bench 
um, to have uh, one of these collapsible, I forget who makes them, but these collapsible benches um, with younger teams, I find it is a great organizing tool to keep kids who get anxious from running around and help the coach organize the team. Um, those are often passed down and passed along in the club. Um, anyhow, but it's also nice to have somebody else help with that. Field setup. This is only required for home games and for teams that are using corner flags on the field. That really means that if you are the first team playing on a field that day, you'll get an email from Pat Green clarifying this for you. But if you're the first team of the day, you're asked to go to our storage container, which is by the Cantor Fields. Um, you'll get the combo each week, so you don't have to you need to remember it. But um, anyhow, and pick up the corner flags and put them on the field. It's also helpful to have a roll of tape so that when the referee tells you that the nets are not perfect, that you can go and tape things back into place. Um, once again, that's only needed for home games. And conversely, if you're the last team on the field, it's putting the corner flags back in the storage locker um, so that they're there for the next, the next game. Um, it's also helpful to have someone volunteer to be the ride coordinator. Um, most managers will be given more emails than they care to get about someone needing a ride each week. And it's always helpful to have somebody else help coordinate that. Um, that often gets tied to a tournament coordinator, depending on which tournaments you're going to. If you're traveling, that definitely helps with um, long term, you know, long distance travel. Um, but even in the short term, if you're doing local tournaments, it's nice to have somebody else help coordinate which pizza place you're going to go to, figure out any of these things. Um, once again, it, it's based on your team's chemistry. Um, my favorite role for the team is the team photographer. That's the other role that I like to play, um, only because I like doing it. But if you have someone who can do that, it's a nice thing, and I think, and I know that everyone appreciates that. Um, social media coordinator, that sounds like more than what it is. Um, that's basically, we have um, team pages for each of our teams, which we're in the process of getting wrapped up. That's the team, and that's really gets tied in with the team website. And that's just a place for people to post pictures for the team and give you a place to have your own little place on the web. Questions? Where do I get the supplies for the medical? Are you going to give me the supplies for the medical bag, or do I pick them up myself? Um, we don't distribute medical bags. That's something that each team has taken care of, at least historically, on their own. Um, there's, if you're like wondering what that is, I know in the past folks have passed around links to a place uh, like a. It's not a particular one, but I know on Amazon you can get a bag that'll get you started that has a variety of ice packs and. Um, things, but but it's basically a bag that just has ice packs and band aids in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's stuff you can get definitely get reimbursed for. Once again, it's not okay, that you're required to have a medical bag at at the game. It's just a very helpful thing to have. I know. Is the bench reimbursable? Is there a budget for that in terms of what I should spend? Um. To my understanding, I'll be very clear with you, that that's something, there was an email from another team today and that was referred to Rich Corvino, who's the executive director of MSC, to check with him. I, I will say that in the past, another parent and I bought the bench together because we thought it was a good idea and we used that same bench for three years and then we kept passing it along and I, still have this imagination. I've been on teams that have had multiple benches and I'm just assuming they get passed along. It don't, really doesn't do anyone good to take that to the beach or have in your backyard. <laughs> I mean, they're neat and all, but yeah. But, and then also um, at the tournaments, parents have bought in the past, I guess I'm, the name is blanking where all the kids can, the tents, that's what I'm looking for. Parents usually chip in for that too. Yeah, that I'm pretty certain MSE will not reimburse for, um, but that is also a great thing to have.
Other questions? You know, and at least I'll say once again about these tasks that can be delegated. That's part of the note, you know, that you'll be sending out uh, your team. And, you know, I know it's a, right now you really haven't had a chance to meet everyone face to face. But once the season gets started and people get to, to see who each other are, um, what I find is folks are pretty generous helping once they know who you are and see that you all have a common cause with your kids. Okay, next thing. I mentioned this earlier, your game day packet slash binder. Um, what do you need to have in here? You need to have your WYSL lineup card. Um, the way you get that is going on to Sports Illustrated Play, and you'll get a number of different options for different types of rosters and different things. Um, if you click on the one that says lineup card, it'll give you one that looks like the one that's on the screen or should look pretty close to that. This one's a couple of years old, but I think it should look just like that where it'll say WYSL, it'll say US Club Soccer, and most importantly, it will say approved on the top of it. Um, my recommendation is as soon as we get off this webinar that you go into your SIP registration or into SIP confirm that you have one of those and check that the roster available says approve. My recommendation is that you just don't hit the print button, but that you download that and have a copy of it as a PDF. And the reason why I say that is that at any time when a player or a parent is added to the team, so if you have a parent assistant coach who comes on, until they get vetted by WYSL, your roster will say not approved in big letters on it, and every player's name will have a strike through on it. Um, and that means you won't have a roster that you can use. So the important thing is to make sure that you have an approved roster that's quite clear that shows the player number, the player name, um, and you'll be good to go for your game. David, sorry, can, where, yeah. I, don't, I don't actually understand where this is, though, on the SI Play site. Is it under, you go to Manager, or where does one look for this? You go to Manager. Mm -hmm. I'm not a manager anymore, so I can't go on. I'm okay. just gonna, we're going to do it here, just on, Noel's going to just double check to make sure we're pointing this out the right way. Thanks for asking. No, thank, thanks for walking us through this. Yeah, just bear with us a second just to confirm. Because it should be when you're logged in as a manager. Because once again, you're going in as yourself. So I, I just logged in, and if you go on the left side, it says Coaches Tools, and then Print Roster. It'll give you a couple options, and one of them will oh, be thanks. lineup card. And mine is not approved. <laughs> okay. That's possible, and that will likely be fixed by Friday. Like, how would I know what it's not approved for? Is it a player or a manager or something like that? Like. Um, Um, what I would do, or my recommendation for that, is to reach out to Paul Nicholas, because um, he's the registrar for WYSL for the club, and he'll be able to sort out. And it may be, it could be for a whole variety of different reasons, like the ones I mentioned before, like they, there may be a player on your team who they were still waiting for proof of birth, um, and that'll hold it up. That'll hold up everybody, not just that one player. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said if you added innocently a parent assistant coach, and that's why, by example, you know, you should, you know, avoid making changes to your roster on a Friday. So even though it's really great, you just found a parent who wants to help out and be the, you know, parent assistant coach, wait till Monday to make that change, not on Friday, um, because that will – um, negatively impact your roster, or at least it'll change it from approved to not approved. But it's still early in the week, and I know that these things get sorted out by Friday, not to get you nervous having to wait till then. 
But I would reach out to Paul and just let him know. Which team is that for? The one that's not approved? That's my team, uh, Revolution Girls 09. Uh, G10 Phoenix, the same. Also, this is not approved. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I would not, th there's no reason to, to panic on that one. It'll get sorted out before Friday. Yeah, I'll check in with Paul after this call just to find out where we are with things. I'll let him know that a number of you are having the same issue that the rosters are not approved. And I'll make sure that gets clarified. Sorry, I have one more question. This it's Melissa. Um, but when I go to SI Play, I've logged in. I see welcome, Melissa. I see my kids, my teams, but I don't have anything on the left for managers or I mean, I just can't get to the right home. Click on the team. Sorry, go to the team. Click on the team name. Oh, okay. That's great. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, sorry, we're like comparing computers here at the side to make sure. So sorry, I couldn't screen share that. But good, I'm glad that got you sorted out. All right, so I mentioned the lineup card. We talked before about bringing your medical forms and there is a not very useful, but hopefully <laughs> clear enough idea that you wanna have all of your player cards, which will be given to you on a ring, on a ring brought to each and every game. You know, when I say, you know, by example, you know, the game day packet, a number of managers find it's really helpful to have a three ring binder to have all this stuff in. I used a packet myself. Um, I've gotten a question from another number of managers about what if you can't make it to a game? And hopefully the, the simple answer is that you can share that packet with a parent who can go to the game. Because once again, the cards get handed to the ref, one copy of the lineup form gets handed to the ref, and then you pick up the cards at the end of the game. And if you'll recall earlier, I showed you an image of all the player cards scanned. Um, not that a referee will accept you showing a picture of a card on a phone, but it still gives me peace of mind to have everybody's card scanned so that this way, if there's an issue, you can have something. And also, you'll probably need it for when you have tournament registration. Okay. Next. Okay, expenses. We asked, this was brought up earlier. We use a system called Tally. And Tally is a very simple, straightforward system that you'll need to send an email to Sam Arnoff to request a Tally login, and he'll set you up. And then from there, it'll give you a number of menu options for submitting an expense. That's for any, you know, uh, tournament fees. So if you've signed up for a tournament and haven't been paid back yet, that's how you'll get paid back. In WYSL, you don't have to worry about referee fees, so sorry for putting that on there. But any of the expenses, like stuff for your medical bag or spare jerseys, those are the kind of things that you'll get reimbursed for. And it's pretty simple. You just put a copy of what the receipt is, um, identify what the expense is, and it's pretty simple. Okay, so we're at the questions part now. What other questions do you have now that you're starting to get into this as being a manager? Or questions about responsibilities, things you need to do? Hopefully we've been clear, but come on, there's gotta be some questions. Sure, I've got, I've got a quick one on the uh, parent assistant coach. I've got one um, one dad who's probably you know ready to go with this. What, what are the details on the licensing requirements? Um, or how do I find that out? No, it's pretty straightforward. Um, they'll need to do the same background check as you had to go through for being a manager. And then there is a, I think it's a six hour course that they need to take to be qualified to be a parent assistant coach. Um, 
with the WYSL, they don't require for the fall season that a parent have that completed. Um, they'll work on the honor system and trust that they're going to do it over the winter because it's basically an all day course and um, it's usually held on a weekend. Um, so you would let, um, who they had tell about being an assistant coach, just trying to remember who they need to reach out to. It's basically touching base with your coach and yeah, but before they have, they register on SI. Yeah, I would say that the, really the process is to just touch base with your coach that they want to be a parent assistant coach. And um, once that gets, you know, talk through um, to then register on SAP as a parent assistant coach. Although, as I cautioned earlier, please don't have them do that on a Friday um, when you want to make sure that your roster is good to go for the weekend because it'll seemingly automatically happen on your WYSL roster and then you'll have a non-approved roster. Right, right, right. makes sense. Any other questions? Hey, David, sorry, I'll just ask again, it's Melissa. Sorry, I got just signed up the other day to be the manager because we needed one. I think I saw someone thing about this um, background check to be a manager, but I have no idea where I saw that. W would that have been on the Manhattan Soccer website or where should I look? There was... Yeah, there was, it was an email that went out from Eddie, and were you on the managers list when I sent out an email to all the managers on the 28th? If you weren't, I also had that on the email that went out to all managers. Do you think you might resend it to oh, me? Sure. Thanks. Um, Right. Okay. All right. Um, but I'll send that to you, Michelle. Thanks. Oh, Melissa. Was that Melissa or Michelle? I apologize. It was Melissa. You got it. Sorry about that. Hi, David. Yeah. Yeah, this is Shanika Gupta. I just signed on to be the manager for Sounders uh, today. So I don't think I've received any of these emails. Would you be able to send them to me too, please? Absolutely. You know, I hadn't sent that to you. I sent you and Michelle an email. Melissa. Oh Melissa. God, such yes. an idiot. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, just call me an idiot. It's okay. I'm good at that. Um, I had sent an email to the two of you today. I just wanted to make sure you were both on board before I started the, uh, the flow of emails going your way. Okay. Um, okay. I replied back later on in the day, but uh, I'm good to go. Oh, great. Um, and awesome. I, think, I think Melissa is too, but I'm not sure. Um, sorry, I actually, like, I can't even find that email in my inbox, so maybe I missed it or maybe it's, <laughs> I don't know. But I, I'm on board, but I'm not sure I have the information. So whatever you think I need, if there's something I haven't done. That's okay. I, I, in I fairness know. to the two of you, I, my, my honest intention was to send an email just introducing you two to each other and then saying just to make sure you know, because I'll, the next step is I'll start flooding you with email, <laughs> not flooding you, but just, you know, getting the ball rolling for the two of you. Okay. Great. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Now I understand why you didn't have that email because you haven't gotten it from me yet. Mm -hmm. No, all good. Okay. Um, if you have more questions, it sounds, and once again, we're still here if there's more questions, but we've set up a new email address this year. It's not new to you, but it's new to us um, called manage, I think it's manager help at um, manhattansoccerclub.com. And basically it is an address that will get to the three of us so that if you have a question, if one of us can answer it sooner than the other, um, you know, you'll see a lot of the emails have come from me because it's just easier for me to hit the send button from my 
personal account and you know a lot of folks have responded back to me which is completely fine but if you use the manager help email address it's just a helpful way of getting to the three of us so that if i'm you know un unable to respond to something or either anna or noel knows better you'll get that so it happens what is that email address what is that address again hey manager dash help yeah at manhattansc.org that is on the manager's resources page and hey, once again yes add it to all of your address books <laughs> and it'll also be on it was on the email that i sent out to all managers before and i'm feeling time to send out another note to hit all managers which will have which kind of like the way i used to do things as a manager keeping helpful things at the bottom of the email so that you have one place to look for stuff. So just to be clear one more time that the player cards are going to be available to, for pickup at upper 90 this weekend. I'm sure you're anxious to get them on Saturday. They'll be there by 11 o'clock. Upper 90 is open till 8 p.m. The cards will also be there on Sunday. I think upper 90 opens at 9 a.m. You'll just go to the front desk at Upper 90, tell them you're there to pick up cards, and just tell them the name of your team. And it should be a very straightforward process there. And hopefully easier because we're doing it at Upper 90, which is a store that's been really helpful to the club. And it'll be open when you go there as opposed to ways we've done it in the past. Alrighty. Any more questions? All righty. Then I'm going to say thank you, everyone. I really appreciate, we all appreciate your volunteering to be a manager. We hope it's a fun experience for you. Um, and have fun at the games this weekend. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye, guys.